Alrighty guys and gals, it is time to look at what is a cravat. Now I know most of you already know what it is, but for the few of you who are just joining us, it's where the wingtip actually gets tucked inside the lines of the paraglider. And a special thanks goes out to Airy in the Air and Fly with Greg for sharing the images. And the next question I get is, how and why does it happen? Alrighty, a cravat happens when some of your wingtip fabric falls inside of your lines when there is less tension on your lines, then gets stuck in there when your body weight regains tension on those lines that are now surrounding your wingtip fabric. A cravat happens usually after an asymmetric collapse, after a frontal collapse, at the time that a wingover does not go so well, and you get a deflation, or after a stall. Most commonly, pilots launch with them, because of a line over a wingtip was not noticed before launching. Alrighty, this is where you have to do some work. Uh, guys... No, sorry, videographer's getting carried away here. Not that kind of work. Alrighty, the first step is get well away from the hill because you're about to do some work. The idea is get yourself well away from the hill. Give yourself lots of altitude to work with. Well, the first question we have to ask ourselves in this case is how big is the cravat? What is the weight shift amount needed? How much weight shift is needed to fly straight? Use a hundred percent if necessary. At first, weight shift only. If you need to use 100% weight shift just to fly straight, then this is a big cravat and needs to be treated as one. Very important. Okay guys, so we have a weight shift only concern here. We want a weight shift only because why? We are mostly concerned with not stalling the wing. How do we do that? Too much brake on the other side. So, weight shift only at first. Why are we pushing so hard for that? Why is it easy to stall the wing? This is our question. Okay, so you're trying to make a normal turn by adding too much brake on the inflated side and asking the wing to fly slower than its manufactured speed to maintain flight, which is approximately 21.5 kilometers an hour airspeed, you're now entering stall point. Very important you understand this. Alrighty, let's use this illustration for a moment. Let's talk about airspeed. Notice in this illustration that when your hands are up and the wing is flying in normal condition, you have 38 kilometers an hour of airspeed on both sides. Okay, looking at this next illustration, let's talk about airspeed for a moment. For this example, let's say that you have to slow the inside wingtip of your glider by 10 kilometers an hour to do a figure eight turn on your base leg before setting up for your final. This is normal. Okay, now what if your cravat is slowing the airspeed across your right wingtip down to 28 kilometers an hour? and you have to do a left figure eight turn on your base leg. Okay, to do that left figure eight turn, you need to slow your left wingtip to 10 kilometers an hour slower than your right wingtip to make that turn and not head to your final leg too high as you could overshoot your landing. Hmm. Okay, so this is where stall can occur as you are now asking that left wingtip to fly slower than its manufactured speed. Remember that stall speed is approximately 21.5 kilometers an hour of air speed and slower. Okay, if you have to add brake with 100% weight shift just to fly straight, number one, you can't land with it. Number two, you must fix it or get over the grass and throw your reserve. Number three, prepare for a PLR. Now, the assessment of a small cravat. If you are able to turn 180 degrees left and right without the wing pulling you to the cravatted side too much, then you have to decide if you are able to land safely. You must not accidentally stall near the ground. That's the whole point here. All right. 
Now, the assessment. Let's take this time to make a good attempt to get rid of the cravat. Well, you still have a good height to work with. Very important. Further on the assessment, the big concern is that when you are coming into land, you will need to do 180 degree turns to set up your landing. If you are not able to do a 180 degree turn away from the cravatted side, this is where stall may occur and you will be too close to the ground at that point. Alrighty, going back to an earlier slide, let's do what we can, shall we? What's the most important thing when we're dealing with a large cravat? Give yourself some room to work with. Get away from the hill. Good. Just a little review here. All right. So remember, always stay focused on your direction. Breathe and recall this information when needed. Maybe watch this video a few times to make sure you know the steps. Okay. Here comes the steps. Number one, get away from the hill. All right. For this example, let's say that you look up and notice the cravat is on your right side. Okay. I'm away from the hill. Now what? Number two, give the cravatted side one good strong pump on the brake and stay focused on your flight direction during this entire process. Take a quick look up and try another one or two if it's working. Number three, get your stabilo line in your right hand. It's a different color. You will see a mess of lines together. All right, so you know that you will turn to the right when you go for that stabilo. So best to put your left side towards the hill. Okay, so stay focused on how much you are turning while going for that stabilo and try to minimize your turning by getting your weight back to the left side as soon as possible. Okay, with that stabilo in your right hand, now focusing on getting away from the hill again. Not too much left break if it's a big cravat, remember that. Okay, so now try giving that stabilo a few tugs with the right hand. And again, uh, I always wear gloves no matter what, no matter how hot it is, because you never know if you're ever in a situation like this. Gloves are wonderful. So, it's still not out. All right, let's go to the next level. Alrighty, so this is your decision time. Number one, do you get over the grassy area and throw your reserve? Number two, what kind of height do you still have to work with? And number three, are you comfortable to go on to more advanced moves? Number four, make the assessment with a calm mind. Okay, we will now look at some more advanced moves. Only perform these moves if you are 100% comfortable to do them. All right, number four, advanced moves. Transfer that stabilo from your right to your left hand and keep direction in mind with weight shift. Grab your big ear line on the right. Go for a big ear on the right with tension on the stabilo being pulled on the left side. The idea is that you want slack on the lines and tension on the stabilo. All right, number five, SIV move. Transfer that stabilo to your left hand and keeping direction in mind with weight shift, grab all your A risers on the right side and go for a 50% asymmetric collapse on the right with tension on that stabilo over in your left hand. Again, the idea is that you want slack in the lines and tension on the stabilo. Works great. Okay, moving to number six, another SIV move. Transfer that stabilo to the left hand and keeping direction in mind with weight shift, go for a deep stall, then hands up to 75% and let the glider dive forward, slacking the lines. The tension is going to be on the stabilo again and it works great. Again, I have to mention, guys, there's absolutely no chance in the world that this is going to replace real quality instruction from an instructor in your area. These are just some extra points you can use, providing you've done an SIV. Okay, number seven, if you are uncomfortable with these advanced moves and you have assessed that it is a cravat too big to land with, then you may choose to get over the grass while you still have good height, throw your reserve, pull in your main wing and prepare for a PLR. Mm -hmm.